Hi, my name is Natalie Brito, and I'm a doctoral student at Georgetown University. I'd like to give you a brief overview of a paper written by myself and my advisor, Dr. Rachel Barr, examining the influence of bilingualism on memory generalization during infancy. Past studies have found bilingual advantages throughout the lifespan, and even as early as seven months of age, suggesting that simply hearing the two languages contributes to the emerging cognitive advantage. We were interested in memory specificity and flexibility in the context of bilingualism because having to learn different sets of rules for each language gives the bilingual child the opportunity to learn from the mixed input. Memory flexibility is crucial to learning because it allows past experience to be applied to a range of future situations that are unlikely to be the same as when the infant learns something the first time. We use the well-established deferred imitation paradigm to compare generalization performance across monolingual and bilingual 18-month-old infants. Deferred imitation is a measure of declarative memory and has been used numerous times to measure memory generalization during infancy. Using this paradigm, Hain and colleagues previously demonstrated that 18-month-old monolinguals could not generalize across two distinct puppets and were only able to do so at 21 months of age. In our study, bilingual infants were defined as those who had a non-native English-speaking parent and infants who had been exposed to two languages from birth. Only infants who were exposed to a second language for more than 25% of the time were included in this group, uh, with average L2 exposure around 37%. For the experimental group, two hand puppets, a cow and a duck, were used in the study. The infant was shown a demonstration with one puppet, where the experimenter removed the puppet's mitten, shook the mitten to ring the bell placed inside, and replaced the mitten. This was repeated two additional times. The experimenter did not describe the object or the target actions during the demonstration. After a 30 minute delay, the infant was shown the other puppet and the number of target actions produced by the infant was recorded. At test, the bell inside the mitten was removed and puppet order was counterbalanced across infants. Monolingual and bilingual infants in the baseline condition were not shown a demonstration of the target actions but rather they were shown one puppet for the first time during the test session to assess the spontaneous production of the target actions. We found a significant difference between the monolingual and bilingual infants where only one out of 15 monolingual infants performed any of the target actions compared to nine out of the 15 bilingual infants. Infants in the monolingual group were also no different from the infants in the baseline condition who were not shown the demonstration. This is the first study to show a clear bilingual advantage in memory generalization, and we discussed some possible reasons for this result within our paper. This is also one of the few studies examining the cognitive advantages of bilingualism during the first two years of development. And overall, these findings suggest that early exposure to multiple languages may influence memory, but more research is necessary to examine the mechanism involved, and studies are ongoing to further investigate this relationship. I hope you enjoy the paper and please feel free to contact me with any questions or comments. Thank you.